anytime we have a discussion about uh, marijuana, this issue comes up that advocates of legalization point out to the fact that we've got other harmful substances, uh, namely alcohol and tobacco, uh, that are currently legal. And therefore, let's just treat marijuana the same way. And part of the argument goes is that if we legalize marijuana, then we can kind of bring it above ground, you know, we can regulate it, we can license distributors, uh, everything can be kind of made safe and orderly, and, you know, because we can get it out of this underground uh, criminal market. So uh, you've no doubt heard this argument, doctor. Uh, What's your take on it? I have heard that argument, and it never makes any sense to me because it's kind of like we have something terrible. Let's Let's legalize something else terrible. Um, <laughs> but, but in any case, there's a number of reasons why. I think in the long run, this new high-potency marijuana will be one of the most dangerous drugs out there. And in some respects, it combines the worst of tobacco and alcohol and even throws in some from the opioids. Um, first of all, it is fat-soluble. We talked about that. That's one reason why it stays in the brain longer and it stays in the tissues longer. You will test positive up to 28 days after one use, okay, because it goes into the fat and leaches out much more slowly because it is fat-soluble instead of water-soluble. It's a problem that we don't see so much with alcohol in that even after they stop feeling high, they are seriously impaired. New Zealand did a wonderful study with airline pilots, and there's been another study with airline pilots since then. They put them in the um, simulators after they've used, and they test them at various points. And 24 hours after use in one of those studies, it showed that though they felt fine, everybody but one said they felt fine, 70% of them were still seriously impaired. Some of them couldn't even hit the runway. Um, So they think they're not impaired, though they still are. Um, Another thing that's different between marijuana and alcohol is that alcohol does have people who use it casually, have a drink now and then. You can't do that with marijuana. The whole goal of marijuana is to be impaired. And if everybody who had a drink was impaired, we would have even more problems with alcohol than we have. But that's a significant difference. Um, And the long-lasting effects that we're seeing with this high-potency marijuana, the permanent brain damage, do we see brain damage with alcohol? Yes, but usually much, much heavier use than required for marijuana. And there was a study out recently that showed the top three reasons for brain loss. The first is schizophrenia, the second is marijuana, and the third is alcohol. So yes, the researchers were surprised that alcohol came in behind marijuana too, But as we've already talked about, marijuana significantly increases your risk of schizophrenia. So it's involved in the top two causes for brain loss. Also addiction rates. The CDC says that marijuana use disorder is about 30% in users. That's high. Mm. That's high. And if you were going to do a bungee jump and they said, well, you know, okay, you got a 10% risk. You're going to sign that permission slip. But what if it's your kid? And now they say there's a 30% risk of long-term damage. I don't think you would sign that. 